Thank you, everybody, again, for coming to uh, Unclean Hands Explained on our Patreon channel. Here we're going to explain each episode or each chapter to you in more detail, but in a fun way. So I hope you guys like and enjoy, and thank you again for your support. So, chapter 11, aptly titled, The Bitter Truth. And this is where Thomas finally confronts his family on what's been going on, and one of the first things that his grandfather says is, fuck this community, <laughs> which squarely places how he feels about everything and that he is just in this for the, for the money. True, true. And I wanted them to see that. Like the last episode, you saw the face change from yep. like this humble, nice old guy to mm -hmm. a monster. So now he don't have to, just like Mr. Chin, you ain't got to hide it no more. Yeah. You want to hide it because they was young. Now they're old enough to understand the bitter truth, how he'll get this money. Yeah. And it's more than it seems even, as so many things are in this whole uh, story, is that it isn't just him acting alone. He didn't just decide, I'm going to take advantage of this community. This was a much larger plan where the government, the U United States government, the FBI, came to him and said, we want to disrupt these communities. Because at the time, the 60s and 70s, mm -hmm. uh, black communities were really uniting and coming together in very powerful ways. And a lot of people didn't like that and didn't want that and sought to find ways to disrupt that. And so really for not only for this business, but for a lot of them to find success, they actually had to fracture the black community so that they wouldn't just go and buy black. They would go to other businesses. Yeah, I mean, the reason why I wrote this, because to be honest, if you really think about it, black people are only 13% in this country, 13%. But yet, they think we're the biggest threat. Mm -hmm. I know some countries, some states, we don't even live. Right. How many black people you know live in Wyoming, <laughs> South Dakota, right. Oregon, uh, Utah? Right. But yet, media shows we're the biggest threat. How can we be? If we're that scary, because you know if they unite, it's a problem. Mm -hmm. So they saw this back in the 60s. Well, Hoover, he like, yeah. nah. I literally saw a documentary, and that's why I wrote this, because everything is facts. You can look it up with me. That Hoover said in 1964, the number one threat to the United States was black unity. Yep. What kind of shit is that? And at the time, we was 30% of the, of the population. Right. we never been 50 or 40. Now we're only 13%. Mm -hmm. But it helped the Latino community because they were so busy worried about us. Right. They went up. Yeah. But guess what? 13%, they're like, okay, we ain't got to worry about them no more. They're going to focus on their ass. And that's just how it goes. Yeah. You see how they passed the abortion thing, right? Mm -hmm. I yes. saw it and, it, and it and it really solidified everything to me this lady seeing it the senator from arizona <laughs> when they passed it abortion was illegal she said and i quote finally we can get our white numbers back up mm -hmm. yeah and i'm like a fucking senator says this so that's you know they thought if they keep going down there's somebody else but we're not gonna be the threat we 13 percent. how the hell else we gonna get to 50 it's that whole white replacement theory yeah, where but they think I don't understand. To... Uh, but th that's why I was trying to show that even back in the 60s, they didn't want that. No, and I the mean, government, it's not they, it's the government don't want that. Yeah. And that's sad. And, that's really sad, but it's the truth. Yeah. And Hoover's FBI infiltrated multiple uh, groups that were, and not groups that were a threat. Like they would come back and report out. This group is not a threat to, they're not an imminent threat. They don't have weapons. Mm -hmm. They're just trying to get food for the community or they're like a resource group. Yeah, they shut it down. But they would, he would say, I don't care. Find me something. Mm -hmm. Don't you come back here without something against them, which basically was make it up if you have to. Of course. And to find ways to, to destroy these groups, fracture them, drive wedges in between. And in that infiltration, those agents would often be that disruptive factor. And the thing is, most of them, uh, they, they started the informant thing. Mm -hmm. And guess where they got the most informants from? The barbershops, mm -hmm. the beauty shops, right. where everybody had to congregate. Yeah, yeah. The reverends. Hell, Jesse Jackson was an informant. Mm -hmm. He the one told me everywhere Martin Luther King was going. Right. Jesse Jackson. Yeah. 
who the man ran for president, and I grew up, my grandmother had three pictures. One of Jesus, one of uh, Martin Luther King, one of Jesse Jackson. Yeah. And when she heard that shit, she threw that damn picture down. Oh, and two more things. The wooden spoon. And a wooden phone. <laughs> then the ones you got beat with back in the day. You know what I mean? Right, because you, you could grab them off yeah, the wall. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm yeah. talking about. You know what the I'm spatula about. wasn't in range. Yeah, but it, that's what happened. So, you know, just the more you know, the more you know that, hey, man, this shit is stacked against us. But I just want you to see anybody, anything I wrote on this, you can literally look it up. Yeah. Yeah, and there are... And not a lot of people know about these these incidents or about well not just incidents about this plan these agendas the, yeah exactly because it wasn't just a few isolated incidents by a few bad apples as they like to say this was a structural like uh, we talked about earlier uh, FBI couldn't mess with the mob right they right. had evidence on them so who next you gonna get mm-hmm. these radicals right these hippies these black radicals yeah. that's what you get. And the first thing you did, pass, make marijuana uh, a number three class A drug, mm-hmm. just like cocaine or something. All of them go to jail now. Yeah. They ain't worry about them voting. There you go. Right. So, yeah, it's, it's there. But I just want people to know that that's how Mark Williams got tied into it. Because he was a failing funeral home guy. He was, yeah. The Johnson family it, it was getting all the money. That town is mostly black. Got rid of them. Well, he got everything. Right. Well, and that seems to be uh, continuing in this uh, story here because we see this car dealership at the end that the uh, officer is running. And we get when he says to Thomas that this never ends. There's always going to be something to disrupt this community. He seems to be indicating that he's doing the same thing at this car dealership. Well, you know, I leave a little suspenseful for uh, Uncle Ann's too. It's going to happen 15 years later. Yeah. I do a 15-year gap between each one. You know, so it's 95, then you're looking at 2010. The next thing you I make it like 2000 when a book come out, maybe 2013. Yeah. Well, 2023, 2024 when it come out. Yeah. So it's around a 15-year gap. So you'll know that, yeah, and nothing stops. If you got a voice, someone's going to fill it. Exactly what we were saying before that yeah, there's always something to fill that that power void. Well, you know, as the as it goes on, as fifteen year gap, the city's gonna get bigger, of course. Mm-hmm. More more players are coming in, more characters, but it still is the same thing. That if you have a demand, someone will supply it. Yes, and that's just it. And again, I I try to make it a southern version of Snowfall and Power. Yeah, Snowfall for the West Coast, Power for Northeast, or the area. And then now you have unclean hands for the South. Yes. Well, uh, I can't forget, too, that, you know, we do ha- we did have a major character here who will not be rejoining in that uh, Mark Williams was taken out by Bells. Yeah, he had to. I mean, yeah. to, he had to clean everything up because yeah. I didn't want nobody to think that this whole series is about the Williams family. Yeah. You know, no, they're taken out. And I told you, next one will be 15 years later. Somebody else is going to fill the void. Right. That's why at the very end, I gave you a clue. Yeah. I gave you some kind of clue, but trust me, that's not everything. But I gave you a little clue. But yeah, I mean, somebody's going to fill that void, man. But yeah, Mark William had to die. All the shit he did. Mm, yeah. And all the things he said, and all his conniving ways. That's why I try to make the illustration show that he was a monster. Yes. Well, and speaking of... Uh, monstrous things. I think we also need to point out that in connection with what Officer Kelly says about things don't change, Thomas's article, you know, we get a, a glimmer of hope for a second there that, hey, this article has affected some change that people have, have read this and are coming together to go, let's, let's shop in our communities more. Let's build this power back. Mm-hmm. But that is kind of ripped out from underneath us whenever we see that this kind of thing is still continuing. Um, So I I thought that was a a pretty great moment that we get that little bit of hope and then we realize that is there really any way out of this? Well, it shows what, what especially with Thomas, that after the story came out, he exposed everything. Yeah. It's going to be a period of calmness. Right. But D.D. comes and destroys that calmness. Yeah, yeah, D.D. comes in a wheelchair. 
you know? So, yeah, with the DG part, I want to make sure that people know that, okay, everything be good for a while, but still, there's a void yeah. that needs to be filled. And don't think because Thomas's grandfather's dad, Mark Williams, that someone else didn't know that town was right for the picking. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? So someone knew that it's money there. Mark had the FBI and the government behind him so they couldn't fuck with that town. Yeah. He's no longer there. The FBI can get somebody else to fill it in. Right. That's just how it works. Right. And again, that has been, it's now such a pattern that's occurred for so long that it's, it's hard to, um, to see a way out of it. Yeah, let's talk about Didi. Didi, yes. Didi, when she shows up in that wheelchair... At first, I thought maybe I had had missed something. I'm like, wait, I, I did I forget a scene where where Dee Dee gets hurt somehow? I'm like, why is she in a wheelchair? And then it's revealed that this has to do with well, she kind of things came back around on her to some degree. But what I liked was that when she explains it, she reveals that things were not as they seem, and that Mims was actually beaten up on her, and yeah. and that. I, uh, Loco actually kind of came to support her in that. I mean, you think I was going to forget about her? <laughs> I mean, I mean, I would have tied in from the beginning to the end. You got to close the circle, you know? Yep. So, yeah, something had to happen to her. Those other guys are dead. Yeah. You think OG Mims didn't have a woman? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It was something had to happen to her. Yeah. If not, it wouldn't have made sense. It wasn't realistic. But, yeah, I mean, she explained how, you know, she was getting roughed up or whatever. Yeah. But still, to mess with his best friend, yeah. that's a no. That's a no gotta. Right. You can't. You don't. You can't do that. Right. You know Even what I mean? If he is the supportive. So one. yeah, I mean anybody else but that guy. Right. It's like you leave your, your wife leave for your brother or cousin. That's yeah. wrong, B. Yeah. Some some got to be taken care of. Anybody else but him. And then she had kids by this guy. Mm-hmm. So yeah, when he died, she got it. But you know, I made it brutal. But yeah, the she, uh, the what the girlfriend shot in the back and both knees. Yeah, she's she's not walking again. No, she can't walk. Mm-hmm. You're gonna be a hoe being a hoe in wheelchair. You know what I mean? <laughs> and my whole thing was back in the days I grew up. I was like, yo, it was a law. If shoot anybody below the below the waist, it's not attempted murder. So it was a knee thing for us. Oh. The shot you in the knees. Yeah. So that's why I, I, uh, originally I just wrote her to get shot in the knees. Right. But I'm like, you know what? I want to get shot in the back too because she really did some fucked up shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? The mess with two dudes. Because she really got both of them killed, be honest. Right. Like Thomas said, Didi, you got to hold some responsibility for this too. Yeah. You no, know, he was right. You mess with his best friend, it's, something was bound to happen when this guy get out. Mm-hmm. And she's trying to explain why he joined the crypt. That doesn't matter. He joined the crypt to protect his own ass because he knew that man was coming home. Right. So he knew he was wrong too. You know what I mean? Yeah. Two wrongs don't make a right. So um, she's still alive, but I don't know if she's going to be returning. I mean, there's a lot of characters who didn't make it out of this story. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I'm very interested to see... Uh, who's gonna Who's gonna appear in chapter two? And Ugly hands too. Yeah, book. yeah. I mean, you got to stay tuned. But trust me, it's new. A lot of new characters and some old. But it's gonna be much, much more current with today. Yeah. Like I said, it was ninety five. The next one be two thousand eight. Then the last one to be up today. But they all coming, and you should have both before the end of two thousand twenty five. But they all be done. Because remember, I got. Of the series to do. Yeah, yeah, I've got but, a lot of. But Uncle Hans is my baby, you know? Yeah. So that's what we're doing with that. But the, these are just books and the audiovisual. The animations are coming out. This is going to be amazing. Uh, I look forward to yeah, that. Uncle How- Hans uh, animation should be out by the end of the year. And after nice. that, we just keep rolling for the next four years. It's nothing but animation. All right. Well, I guess people should uh, should keep uh, staying tuned and looking for all these things coming up. Yes, and of course, my Patreon supporters, they'll be the first ones to get everything as usual. You guys pay, you support this channel. I make sure you guys get everything first. 
Trust me, I love you guys, and to me, you guys are family. Every after that, YouTube channel will get it, but you guys are always first. And thank you again for supporting us. Like I said, we got more content. We got my great host Perry with me, and we're gonna keep doing our thing. And uh, thank you guys for everything. And please, please look at us on YouTube and Instagram. Thank you guys for everything. We love you. Well, I've really enjoyed taking this journey with you because of course you knew the whole story but i've been finding out as we went along here and uh, i'm looking really really forward to see where this goes all right thank you so much next one is relative weddings we'll do that soon okay the relative wedding i explain this next thank you guys